Welcome to Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Staltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. I have been doing this series for the last year or so, where I am focusing my attention on the Fijiwa, the King's Daughters, and we are looking at each and every one of them. There's, it's a lot. We're on number 97. To those of you who are new to the channel, the uh, previous videos are on my website. You can have a look. There's links to it, or you can also look on this YouTube. So go to haverootswilltravel.com, and uh, I also have a Facebook page that you can look at. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notifications alert so that you can find out uh, when your particular Fijiwa or ones that you're interested in um, come up. So with that, let's get started, shall we? Those of you who are new to the channel, please have a look at um, Li Fi Jawa, the program version point two o. Uh, it's a video I produced. It's probably um, in the playlist. Um, you'll be able to find it. Um, it basically tells the story of the entire program. So have a look at that, and that will definitely help you understand what all was going on during that period. Let's find out who is our Fi Jawa. So her name is Marie Bouard. Now she was a viewer request, so I put her in. And uh, lo and behold, she's one of mine too. So she is in fact, one of my great grandmothers as well. So that was a thrill. Um, I kind of have a list, um, but I kind of forgot about this one. So I'm very grateful to the viewer who requested. Let's have a look at Marie. So Marie, we actually have her baptism. Uh, she was baptized on February 22nd. 1649 at Saint-Savin in the area of Bignou, Bignou, France. It's um, it's a commune in the Vienne department in the Nouvelle Aquitaine. So in that, on the right, you can see where I've circled, that's where Nouvelle Aquitaine, the region is. And then we have um, where in that particular uh, region, because remember uh, France has 18 regions currently, um, and inside each region, it's divided into, let's say, let's call them counties, but they're actually, in French, they're called départements, departments. And so her department would have been the department of Vienne, and that is where she would be, that is where her small towns, her small commune, remember, that is what they call townships in um, in the area. And that exactly here is a picture on the bottom left of the um, church where she would have been baptized. And, the, and these a couple of pictures that I put in are just, you know, what it looks like today. So if you wanted to travel, which of course I want to. So let's have a look at Marie's life. So after her father's death, Marie left for France with a dowry worth about 300 pounds. She would arrive in Quebec City July 3rd, 1668 on the ship La Nouvelle France is the groom she selects and who selects her? Well, his name was Jacques Entrade, and he was born on the 16th of April, 1643, in the town of Niort um, in France. It's a commune in the Du Sèvres department. Remember that department? It belongs to the region of Nouvelle Aquitaine. So isn't that interesting when you begin to understand that Marie and Jacques were actually kind of neighboring, um, it, were from the same region, at just different departements, so they had some sort of connection. Um, New York is actually a fairly large city. It's kind of the um, capital of the Department of Du Sèvres, and the population of New York uh, today is 58,000. Uh, it's a major business area today with, um, you know, mutual insurance and bank companies, which are the major focus of their activities. Now, this place, New York, I found it fascinating. I always find so many places in France so fascinating. But it had its origin in the 7th century when a small bridge was built over the Sèvre, which is the river, and was named New Ford. The village became known as Noviotum and then Niort. So it was kind of had that, you know, that, um, that's how the name sort of evolved. In the 12th and 13th centuries, the ocean extended as far as New York, making it a prosperous port with, with the piers, welcoming hundreds of sailing barges, carrying salt and wine and cereals and skins, bringing prosperity to the town. 
Now, King Henry II of England and his son, Richard I, also known as the Richard the Lionheart, erected the castle you see on your left. The castle um, on the the castle you, you see on your left, let me just show you right there, right in the left here, um, on the bottom left. The city of New York became one of the centers of Protestantism in Western France and suffered after the revocation of the Edict of Nantes in 1785. So we see that Protestant um, focus as well, the Huguenots. Um, and, um, you know, basically that's his area that he's coming from. His parents, Louis Entrade and Louise Metayi. Um, and uh, we do not know what happened to them, why he left. Let's have a look at Jacques' travels. So we know that he arrived in New France on September 14, 1665, as a Carignan Salière soldier with the company called Nora. So let's have a look at um, how they met. So it's obvious that Jacques had been in New France for, a, for three years. Um, had decided he was going to stay, probably got some land. And uh, here comes Marie. She gets off the ship July 3rd. By August 16th, I always find this fascinating, 1668, you can see their marriage. So they were married um, in Quebec City. So let's have a look at where they go next. So they settle in a place called Porte Neuf, which means Newport. Um, and so let's have a look at Porte Neuf and how and how it got settled. Well, in 1636, the area was granted by the Compagnie de la Nouvelle France, uh, the New France Company, as a seigneury to Jacques Le Neuf de la Poterie, who would become the substitute governor of Trois-Rivières eventually. The first colonists uh, came around 1640 and settled at the mouth of the Porte Neuf. Um, and so this is kind of the where the, they're located. You can see that it is um, just a little bit down the river from Quebec City. This is the, obviously the church was not there when they came, but that is the church you will find when you visit. And of course, this on the bottom left is the amazingly beautiful um, town and, and uh, that still exists obviously today and is ripe for visiting, which I will be doing next summer, I hope. Jacques and Marie would go on to have one child and her name was Marie Anne. She was born in 1669 and she died in 1750. She would go on to marry Pierre Gibelou, the Lafleur, and have seven children, four of whom made it to adulthood. And unfortunately, Jacques would succumb to, we do not know, but he, uh, and we do not have a death certificate. Um, we assume he is buried in um, Quebec City. He um, would die sometime between the 30th of August 1669 and the 3rd of March 1672. The reason we know the last date is because of this. It so often happens in New France. One man dies and another arrives and we will see who arrived for Marie. So the new gentleman that came along was a man named François de Rousseau, the Le Bourguignon et la Plante. That's a long name. He was born about 1631 in a place called Saint Pantalion, France, which is found actually, this is one of the rare ones. Look where it is on the map in the left, Provence of a um, Côte d'Azur. So we all know the Côte d'Azur and how beautiful it is um, and how you know, it really is in a totally different area of, of uh, France, uh, one of the most southern places. Um, now, he is actually within that, he is in a region, a département called Volos, and his little town in saint pantillon remains as charming as it is. It's a very rural community. Um, a couple of hundred people live there. We also, on the left, um, we'll see the uh, remnants of a 12th century church, which probably was the church that Francois would have been baptized in, but truly a beautiful little country, um, country village, if you will, commune. Um, and um, let's explore Francois and his life. 
So Francois would come with the Carignan Regiment as well. Um, he arrived June 30th, 1665 with Le Compagnie Monteil. So let's have a look at, you know, he decided to stay after, um, after his tenure as a soldier. And so he was in the colony for about three years before um, Marie would come. So let's have, or actually, yeah, before he married Marie, which would be probably five or six years, actually, 1672. So let's have a look. François was, I believe, installed at Betska, and that is where they married, March 3rd, 1672. We do not have any um, information or contract or a copy of the contract that I have been able to ascertain. This is a picture of the church as it exists today, not as it would have existed uh, when François and Marie were married. So let's have a look at the family they create. So the family does settle in Betisca, and um, this history of Betisca begins with our old friend Champlain, who met up with a native named Betisca in 1609 and by 1612 he had named this area Betisquam but in 1636 the seigneury was granted to Jacques Laferté at which time it was called Madeleine um, in case you ever see that information if you have one of those uh, real pioneer settlers uh, in this area by 1639 it was divvied up again and given to the Jesuits hence this area did not grow until 1666 when settlers began to arrive. Prior to 1670, the inhabitants met at the home of Lieutenant Nicolas Rivard de Laving, who happens to be one of my great grandfathers. Um, and a wooden chapel is constructed by 1684. So I like to think that maybe they got married. Um, so one of my ancestors got married in Nicolas' house. I don't know, it could have happened. Uh, and then the parish of St. François Xavier de Betisca is formed in 1684. So we can see where Betisca is on the map um, here on the left in terms of the Signori. We can also see um, on the current map of today the, the church and then the beautiful rural uh, community that is part that is Betisca even to this day. This in the middle is the 1681 census where we have François who is 50, Marie, who is 40, their children, Catherine and Madeleine, and they have three Arta Avala, which isn't a lot, so it, it's interesting. So uh, they only had about an acre or two of land. So let's have a look at the family they actually created. Marie, their firstborn, would marry Jean Etienne and have six children, but only two of whom would make it to adulthood. Second born Catherine married Jean Baril, and the, he, they had four children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Françoise uh, married Pierre Généreux, and they had nine children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Madame Catherine married Pierre Beribou and had three children, all of whom made, made it to adulthood. Where François married Elisabeth Bertrand and had seven children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Jean-Baptiste married Marie-Jeanne Baribou, yes, that is indeed the sister uh, of Pierre Baribou, so yes, that is the same. They had six children, and five of whom made it to adulthood. Their last son, Charles, would die at two years of age. Yes, it's true, Marie would endure another death of a husband on the 20th of March, 1688. Um, François would pass away. He is buried in Betisca. What's next for Marie? One man dies and another arrives. So her third husband, Jean Boismeny, was born in 1651. And guess what? He was born in the same exact town as her first husband, Jacques, at New York, France. And um, so that's an interesting, did they know each other? What was the connection? I mean, it's, France is still a remarkably large place. So the fact that she had two husbands from the same area, um, just interesting to me. Within a, a year of Jacques passing, um, she would then marry, um, she would then marry Jean. 
um, February 6th, 1689, and um, it was also in Betziska. So just to give you a little context, in 1689, she's newly married. She's endured that loss of her husband the year before. And then by the August of 1689, she endures the loss of her last child, Shao. So that means that in an 18 month span, she would have endured two deaths and a marriage, just incredible highs and lows of life. She would go on to live with Jia for the next 22 years when she would pass away on September 15, 1712. She was 63 years old, which for the time was fairly old, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't the oldest she could have made it. So I think the, the trials and tribulations she had obviously had an impact. Um, and Jean was actually the, the person she was married to the, the longest. Uh, with Francois, she was married 16 years and Jacques only a few years. But by 1729, her impact was there. She had 86 descendants um, and they would go on and flourish. And I am obviously one of them, and as is my viewer. So we thank her because without her, I wouldn't be doing this video right now. So her, um, her life um, contributed much to not only Porteneuf, but also Betisca. So she was an early pioneer there as well. Um, what she endured and what she went through I can only imagine, I, I actually can't imagine, you know, it's just incredible to me, the, the fortitude, the stamina of these women. And I, I hope that I've gotten a little tiny bit of their DNA. Um, and with that, we thank her for her contribution and her sacrifices, and we bless her memory. With that, uh, let me just give you a little bit more information for you to keep exploring. I have made a new a new um, kind of screen just to, I, I thought, well, you know what? I need to share more of the resources that I use. So I'm, I'm gonna start with number one, La Société des Filles du Roi, which is a, a society that I belong to. It's been remarkable, been around since 1994. Um, you get a lovely certificate, but even if you didn't wanna join, go on there and find out a little bit more about your Per particular person, you'll be, uh, it is a really a good website. Number two, Quebec Genealogical Society. It's the E-Society of Quebec. I have put all the links for you. It's a really great site for uh, Quebec research. Nos Origines um, is just an amazing website and you need to explore. I use it probably daily to verify. Not all the information is 100%, um, but it, it's, uh, it's very good. It's very, very good. Genealogy Quebec is one, I probably, when I say I use it daily, I'm actually, I use it almost hourly. And that one is incredible in terms of the resources you can have. It is a subscription based, uh, but well worth it if you are doing a lot of research in Quebec. Five Migration, again, an incredible website in terms of Les Filles du Roi. It is in French and you can use that Google Translate. And then, of course, the Facebook page, Filles du Roi Descendants. There are lots of different Facebook pages, but this is the one that really focuses on Les Filles du Roi. So I would heartily recommend it. Gets lots of, uh, you know, good information and it's sharing of, of ideas and things like that. So I would absolutely recommend that. And so ends episode number 97, <laughs> number 97. I bid you adieu and au revoir until I see you on episode number 98. Until then, au revoir.